everybody, welcome to today's video. This video is going live on December 10th, and today's video is all about the differences between walking with a guide dog and walking with a cane. Now this is my impressions only. Um, everybody's experience I think is different, but I do think these are some key things that are very different and probably every guide dog user would agree on these being different. I did try to get some videos for those who can actually see the videos on what I am talking about and hopefully getting an idea of, you know, what it feels like to walk with a guide dog and walk with a cane. I am going to say ahead of time that all of these videos are at normal speed. Um, I have gotten a lot of comments that Bali and I walk very fast and most people probably couldn't keep up with us. I would say I walk slower with a white cane, but um, I do walk still on the faster side and always have. So um, these are at real speed. None of these are sped up. <laughs> so. Um, just think this is the speed I walk and hopefully you can get an idea. But let's go into some of these videos and some of the differences. So I think one of the biggest differences is the sound. Um, you may not think of sound as being a huge difference, but it is quite a big difference between walking with a cane and walking with a guide dog. When you walk with a cane, um, the way I was taught to walk with a cane is to roll the tip on the floor or on the ground um, at a constant speed. So as you step, the cane moves, which means there is a constant sound of the roller tip rolling on the ground. Now, not every blind person who walks with a cane is taught this way. There is different techniques to be um, walking with a cane and that is all dependent on your mobility specialist. And I'm sure there are canes tips that sound less or more than mine, um, but this is like I said, my experience. Um, so walking with a cane, you have a constant noise, which is good because you need to pay attention to the noise for different surfaces. It's just one of those things you have to do. Um, but it is constantly there and you're constantly having to pay attention to it. So I'm going to put in a clip of me walking with my cane here. Now walking with a guide dog is not silent, but it's definitely a different noise. Um, instead of the roller tip touching the ground and you hearing that, what you're hearing is the jingling of the tags, the jingling of the gear, um, the tapping of their feet on the ground. It's just a very different, and for me, I can actually zone out the sound of the gear because what the gear sounds like is not important for feedback when you're walking with a guide dog. So for me, I can zone out her sounds, um, but here is a clip of the sounds that Bali makes while we are walking. So the next big thing that is different is the way it feels, the movement and the way it feels. Um, when you are walking with a cane, no matter if you are doing the tapping or you are doing the rolling, your hand, arm, however you use it, is constantly moving back and forth. Um, as you take a step, you move, and it is a constant motion in your arm, and some people can switch arms, some people can't. Um, I definitely am more right side dominant than left side, but I can do it on my left. Um, but it is a constant movement with your arm back and forth. And um, later in this series, you will find out why I struggled with that. But for right now, I'm just going to show a video of my hand moving while walking with Kate. Now walking with a guide dog, um, one of the struggles is, is that your arm is in almost the same position all the time. It is not moving unless you are um, feeling the pull of the harness right at the stop, start or right at the stop. Um, otherwise your hand is in the same position. Now this can be 
good or bad depending on the person and also your hand is in a different position depending on what kind of handle you use. Um, I started off with a straight handle which meant that my arm was kind of up, my elbow was up in the air and I was gripping it kind of up in the air. I have now gone to an ergonomic handle which means that my hand is more at a natural spot down at my side. Um, for me and my problems, the ergonomic handle was definitely what I needed. Um, your handle is based on your school because some schools offer certain handles and some don't. Um, it is based on where your placement is next to your dog, um, too close, too far, you know, just right. And then it is also um, based on your needs with your medical issues or your hand placement. Um, so I'm going to put in the clip of me that you so you can see my hand placement. This is with an ergonomic handle. I probably have a picture and if I do, I will put it after the video of me walking with a straight handle from the front. Forward. Let's go. Let's go forward. Feedback. Feedback from a dog and feedback from a cane are very, very different. Um, I would say this is probably one of the biggest things that is different between walking with a guide dog and walking with a cane. Um, when you're walking with a cane, the feedback is coming from the cane through your arm or from the sounds to your ears. Um, it is all you need to pay attention to way, the way it feels and the way it sounds. Um, these are the two biggest things. This will tell you if you've hit grass or if you've hit carpet or there's stuff on the ground or you've hit an obstacle in front of you. It is all feedback between your arm and your ears. Um, it is hard to walk on surfaces with a cane, at least I find it is, um, when there is stuff on the ground. Um, I do have a clip that I will put in after this that shows me walking with a bunch of leaves on the ground. Um, if you can hear it, there is a bunch of audio where you can actually hear the cane like rustling through the leaves and kind of how it stopped and started. Um, this is so true and being able to feel the ground through the leaves is almost impossible. And I've had times where walking with my cane that I've gone onto the grass and not even known it because it didn't feel any different. So I'm gonna put the clip of me walking through the leaves here. Now walking with a guide dog, the feedback is all what the dog is telling you. This is a pull in the harness when you're going. This is a stop in the harness when you've stopped. This is moving left and right as they move you in the placement of the um, sidewalk or the obstacles. Um, feedback under your feet is not necessarily that important and knowing what you're walking over um, as you get with your dog, your dog will pick up on where you might need to slow down and to speed up depending on what you're walking on. But really the feedback is all, what is the dog doing and what is the dog telling me? This is one of the hardest things when getting um, a guide dog that people have is many people rely on that tactile feedback. And it is really hard to trust the dog and not what you're feeling with a cane because you are not feeling it and having to trust your dog that your dog is going to tell you what surfaces and where to go. It is one of the hardest things. And um, for me, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't the surfaces that was the problem or the tactile feedback because um, you will find out in a later video that for me, the tactile feedback was actually what was hurting me versus, um, you know, needing to know it. So I'm gonna show a video here about me walking through the leaves with Bali. Right, let's go, hop up. Yep, hop up. So for me, one of the joys of walking with a guide dog versus a cane is the ability to find things 
and not have to look like I'm lost or anything as I'm trying to find obstacles. Um, Bali was trained when I first got her to find doors, to find chairs. Um, we have since like refined that and been able to go through and she finds benches and she'll find outside or she'll find counters. We've been able to just hone in some of the needs that I have. Um, I can tell her to go to the pharmacy and she'll go to the pharmacy. Um, this is, I think, one of the benefits and the things I love about having a guide dog because um, although I have some residual vision, going in and out of buildings, especially when it's dark outside and light inside or vice versa is very hard on my eyes and I don't have to rely on her finding the doors. I don't know how many times I've gone up to a glass set of windows thinking it's a door and it's not a door, um, but Bali finds the door every time. Um, when you have a cane, you are bumping into things and touching things, trying to find what you're looking for. And for me, I just, it, it was not something I liked doing. Um, I still had to do it, but um, definitely having a dog and being able to teach it the commands that you need and the targeting you need is so much nicer. Um, I don't have a video of this. Um, but know that I can tell Bali to find a pole that I've trained her with or to find a bench or to find the curb and she will take me there versus attempting to find it with my cane. I'm sure everybody has a different set of differences between walking with a guide dog and walking with a cane and I will get into some more personal reasons of why there is a big difference and what the difference has made for me. Um, in the later video where I talk about my journey to a guide dog um, and using a guide dog and using a cane are purely individual, purely preference. Um, I don't think there is a right or wrong way, although there are some organizations and some people who would say that a cane is the only way for a blind person to travel. Um, you know, and then there are some people who would say that having a guide dog is the only way for a person to travel and it's definitely individual and it's definitely personal and I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. I think we all need to travel the way we are comfortable. I will say that traveling with a guide dog has given me a lot more confidence and um, although it was hard in the beginning to trust her and to know when to use my vision and when not to use my vision, um, being able to um, move independently and know that I'm not gonna run into anything. I'm not gonna run um, off the curb. I'm not gonna trip. I'm not going to um, look in my way what I was thinking stupid trying to find a door is so much better for me. And it's so much more relaxing to walk with my guide dog versus my cane. Um, I hope this video was a little bit educational for those who may not walk with a guide dog or a cane or those who may be thinking about walking with a guide dog and want to know the differences. And of course, these are all my differences. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and look forward to our next video on December 13th.